Uh, first off, uh, Michaela and Nicole, and Nicola, thank you. Uh, thank you for the interview. Thank you for your time. Thank you for, for a really cute, cool movie with, I think, you know, a subject that it's still really relevant. So really real and, and, you know, deserves, you know, there's the space. So I want to, you know, what I did even first with Nicholas and, and I think, you know, again, being the subject so real, so still relevant, um, how did the story came about? Uh, well, the story came about in an interesting way. Um, it actually came through uh, Michaela and I have uh, been friends for a, a long time. And she uh, was immigrating to America from South Africa. And while she's here in the immigration process, which if anyone knows that process here in America is very, very difficult um, and can be expensive. So she's uh, going through and hiring a lawyer, uh, an immigration lawyer for uh, the process. And the gentleman was uh, kind of, you know, I'm asking her how the process is going. She's like, well, my lawyer's not really getting back to me. I'm a little nervous, you know, I've given him, you know, the money that I have and uh, I'm not sure how the process is going. I haven't heard from him. So I get, and I'm in the process of thinking about, we're going to make a film coming up this summer. And I'm thinking about, you know, want to, um, you know, I'm turning ideas in the back of my head, but um I started doing some research, like do immigration lawyers, you know, they're lawyers in America, you think, you know, they're going to be honest, reputable people for the most part, but does it ever go wrong? Is anyone ever sketchy? Does anyone just take the money and run? You know, a multitude of situations. And through, uh, through a very easy amount of research, a quick Google search, apparently there's been tons of cases of people who have been screwed over by their immigration lawyer been taken advantage of and all these horror stories that we started reading and I started thinking to myself well um we need to you know we need to investigate this further I think we have an a, a a story for our film and so let's start investigating this further and yeah that's uh I mean we took some you know elements uh of our own but yeah definitely looked at a lot of true stories that um that went on and 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 sort of dove into it and, and wrote our tale. So, hey, that's a good tip. I mean, I, I wasn't expecting that answer, you know, that to, for it to be so real. I mean, because I know that you just mentioned that's when I was doing my research for the interview, that's what I was thinking. Is it, this is something that happens all the time and people don't know about it. And it's just so real. But I, I just, I absolutely love your answer because it's just it puts it in another level. Just in the push us on the no we on our level. And so you know, Michaela, let me jump into you now. Uh, you know, what was your first reaction when you drove into the project? I mean, you know, piggybacking on what just Nicola said, just awesome, you know, it's really it's I mean awesome in a good way in the in an essence that we're putting, like your Nicola just said, we're putting a spotlight on something that maybe other people don't know. So what was your first reaction when you drove into a project? Wow, I mean, first off, it it was very close to home. Thankfully, not exactly the same experience. Um, nowhere near as harrowing as um, the the production and the story that we're telling. But I think what was truly shocking to me is because I come from a third world country where human trafficking is a reality. And coming to a first world country, there's a, a false sense of security one might have, mm -hmm. believing that this is not necessarily the problem here but it is it's a real problem and like you say it's one that may not be well known and may not have a voice and i think that's what we endeavor to do with this this mm -hmm. film is sort of lifting up the veil mm -hmm. and telling a story of unsung voices and and sort of shining a light on that oh i'm sorry he's my dog is desperate to be a part of this interview hey stop stop no <laughs> um I think it's it's the most unnerving thing for me was that what separated my story from from the worst possible situation was one degree and I was just very lucky and that this is many many people's stories and getting into the states and staying here I was very fortunate it could have gone many different ways so I was very humbled to um bring a voice to this and um to have the opportunity to shine a light on something that is ignored. Um, when I come back to, to Nicola, so again, 
excellent tip that, that that I wasn't expecting that answer. I mean, to be for, for real. So, um, <laughs> take take into consideration that. I mean, what 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 the stuff? What one of the stuff has things you 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 know that maybe the two of you had to I mean, a question, right? Uh, had to you know have go through in the whole process of filming and taking you know playing, developing the story. What one of maybe one of the take into consideration that this was such a sensitive subject, right? And 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 what was maybe one of the most toughest things that you had to go through through the development process? Mm. Um, well, you know, we want to again, you know, we're taking, um, you know, we still we're we're making a movie at the end of the day. We want you know elements to be fun and exciting and and get into um, certain characters, uh, you know, and, and make sure this is uh, you know still taking it seriously with the subject matter. Mm -hmm. So. We had to, uh, but of course, you know, there are scenes that were very difficult to film, um, you know, when we're really dealing, and specifically with Michaela's character, because Michaela's character is the one who is the immigrant who is being taken advantage of. So, you know, she definitely had some um, scenes, especially, uh, you know, I, I not to get uh, uh, give too much away because mm -hmm. it's interesting to get to this point in the story and you realize why this girl is seeking sort of revenge or trying to take, you know, take this immigration lawyer down. Uh, but the scene uh, where we learn, I guess I'll say this, the scene where we do learn why she is uh, doing what she's doing the whole movie, why she's trying to get from Sedona to Los Angeles to take revenge on this immigration lawyer. When we learn that moment in this sort of flashback sequence, um, I think that moment, and I'm sure probably similar for Michaela, was the most difficult um, you know, emotionally, because obviously, you know, you got to take, you got to, you got to go there as an actor and I've got to, uh, you know, be there with her to try to, you know, understand what she's going through and capture it on the camera as honestly and truthfully as possible. And to do that, it's, you know, you really just have to live out the circumstances. So there's a lot, I think, you know, us, specifically with her character as well, that she had to go through that wasn't easy, that she did marvelously well. Hey, do you want to expand on, on the question, maybe, Michaela? Um, You know what? This was the very first American and, um, well, the very first American production I worked on. Um, Nicholas had seen my work on a Netflix show prior to this. So I had dealt with international media, but this was the first time that I was shooting in and around California and Hollywood. So that in itself was a dream come true. One of my big concerns was our familiarity. I didn't want that to get in mm -hmm. us being friends. I've been, I've been very close with everyone I've worked with in the past. So I'm comfortable with it, but it, it, was, it was a bit of a, an adjustment for my mind and my headspace, just knowing that I was gonna be involved with an American production and getting to experience the differences there. So that was an adaptation. Um, and then, <laughs> this is gonna sound silly, but. Where I come from, we drive on the other side of the road, on the other side of the car. <laughs> and one of the first scenes that I shoot, and I've never driven in the United States before, they put me in the driver's seat <laughs> with this very expensive camera on the back seat. And they're like, all right, so we're gonna go driving now. You're driving. And uh, all I can think of is, I don't, I don't wanna kill myself. I don't wanna kill my, <laughs> my colleague sitting next to me. But the worst would be to destroy the camera, which is worth so much money on the back seat. I'm glad you put that first. Yeah, no. I'm uh, sorry. That was all, very nerve-wracking for me. It was nerve-wracking for everyone. Oh, yeah. Yes, it was uh, nerve-wracking for everyone because, I mean, she has to be the one driving. You know, this is her <laughs> story. I'm like figuring, I'm like, well, maybe the other guy can drive. And it's like, no, like she needs to be in control and she's the one doing this. But maybe we can like, you know, tire to the top of the car and maybe that'll be interesting. There's, there was, uh, there was no way around it. She needed to drive and it was day one. Cause it was I don't the know. Base, though, because that scene was a very high stakes scene. So there, there, was, there was very little acting going on there. It was very method. We were very, it was very realistic. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I suppose apart from that, it was one of the best experiences of my life. The Nicholas has an incredible way of communicating with his fellow actors and with the entire production team. Everyone there wanted to be there. It wasn't a job. It was a passion project for each of us equally. And I've never been involved with anything quite as profound as that. We all just wanted to do our best 
and we threw ourselves in 100% because we were led by Nicholas, who was throwing himself every single day into the project 150%. Mm -hmm. So my, I must commend Nicholas on being a phenomenal leader and a great captain to the ship because he made a safe space for us to explore. Even though he threw you under the bus to drive the car, I just had a question. <laughs> I have to say this. I wanted to no, work I'm, with I'm, you again. I just, yeah, I'm just making a joke because that, that sounded funny. That sounded funny. Yeah. That's like a, a fun tip. joke to make. Yeah. Uh, 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 Michaela, when yeah. I'm you know, I mean, this is awesome. I really wasn't expecting those answers. So this is awesome that, you know, how, what did you saw or what did you put up from yourself personally on your car, taking in consideration that basically you're in the, you were in the same position, not exactly the same position, but you were in the same position, you know, back in the day. So what from yourself do you put in your character? Goodness, I think this is one of those age old um, questions. And uh, for me personally, as a performer, I think the most important thing when you're portraying a story is to give it the most truthful voice possible. So it's not about acting, it's about finding yourself in a character. So your question is very pertinent to any performance that you want to do justice as a performer. And sadly, growing up in a third world country, I was exposed to a lot of violent crime. I was exposed to um, a lot of sex, sexism. And I have, I've worked with many um, survivors of sexual abuse. I know people socially back home so this story was very close to me. Um, and there's always the danger of closing off to something because it is too close to you. But I just tried my, my, my very best to find pieces of me that would represent the many different pieces of people and the many different people that are experiencing this on a daily basis so that it isn't a, a farcical thing, so that it is a truthful thing that honors them. And I think, my my huge goal in life as a performer, and I think the same can be said for Nicholas and anyone creating art, is to speak to people, to make them feel something, because when they feel something, they care. And also for me, if even one person out there that is going through something similar or feels alienated or alone were to watch this, connect to it and feel a little bit less frightened, a little bit more empowered, then we've done we've done everything we could hope to have achieved. I think you answer my next question with that with that uh, statement, and I think I just I, I agree with you a lot, a lot with, with, it, with it. But I want to ask the question anyway, and I want Nicholas to to, to respond first. Um, obviously, really personal, really real. A lot of people that maybe were in that situation and relate to it, and and they may maybe have find a way to use the the, the movie as a as a pass or as a platform to open up and and open a discussion, which is like pretty sure, pretty pretty sure that's something that we want to do with this movie. But Nicholas, you're, you're first. What do you expect people you know, to take away from it? What do you expect people, once they see it, how do you feel that people are gonna react to it? Hmm, well, it's sort of a, a, a challenge to when you have something that you want to say in the film and sort of figuring out how best that your audience is going to take that, but not getting caught up also um, you know, in, in that you need to remember again we're trying to tell a story and mm -hmm. we're trying again movies and film film is a entertainment platform so trying to find that way where we're still you know really honoring the subject matter but still you know telling i mean we're telling a a, a, a fictional story about a woman seeking revenge uh on her immigration lawyer so what we hope to do is with this is specifically we want people to understand that when it comes to also sex uh, trafficking, sex slavery, that it's not always what you think it is in terms of like, you know, what you see in the movies, what you see, you know, it's not Liam Neeson going into a, a you know, a fucking big, you know, uh, a freight and, you know, breaking people out of chains. It's very, very, you know, subtle. And the danger comes in the subtlety and the everyday uh, interactions that that can procure these these sort of crimes and it and I, I hope we just shine uh, a bit of a light on how people can take advantage of others just by their desperation and specifically with you know with immigrants how you know they are desperate in this country 
when they're trying to seek a green card here, they don't have a lot of money. The process is expensive. You can't get a job here. So how are you supposed to earn that money? So that's, that's where people find the ways to take advantage of others. And so I do hope that we shine a light on that and people find um, interest and courage in Michaela's character and so much of her uh, just, you know, essence and being is, is, is in that. And, and, you know, that specifically, and then we have a lot of, um, you know, human interactions between, I mean, we, we look at our story, we've got a lot of interactions between parents and their children. And, you know, so there's other uh, pieces that we hope people find of interest as well, um, you know, and, and touch them as well. So, you know, I hope, I hope they take, if they take away anything from it, you know what I mean? That's, that's a win for us. So. Makina, you want to expand on it? I, I, um, I think by it's the power of word of mouth and, and ringing a bell. I don't think you can quantify it. Once you place an idea in someone's head, you, you can't really pull it away again. So, I think that's the power of media, the power of art, the power of telling stories. As people, we all want to make a change in the world. And as film producers, creators, and, and artists, we have a unique platform where we can speak about stories. We can, to a multitude of people, to a huge audience where it's discussed. And I think the most important thing that Nicholas mentioned was that this is, this is not a highly dram like dramatized um mm -hmm. romantic notion mm -hmm. that this is happening all the time mm -hmm. and that it's subtle it goes unnoticed it's not Liam Neeson action sequences mm -hmm. it's somebody that you pass in a shopping center it's someone you pass on a sidewalk the and I mean I've seen this in my home country they're the, the faceless people that you pass every day that don't have a voice, that don't know how to get help, that don't know how to get themselves out of their situations or may not even see their situation as being a bad one where they're convinced that that's all they're due. That's the best they can do. That's the best that they can hope for. And they just make peace with that. And immigration is a, is a, a, a truth, a problem everywhere in the world in that vulnerable people are going to be exploited and taken advantage of so it's not just in this country it's everywhere many different facets many different kinds of minority groups um and i i hope that we grant a bit of light and courage to those who may need help and i'm i, I do believe that uh, nicholas is looking at potentially partnering up with um an organization or a group i'm not sure we discussed this at some point um where like a numbers that people could call if they're going through something mm -hmm. similar so that we're not just telling a story but we're mm -hmm. actually making an impact at the same time I, I i completely agree with you i think i think now i think this interview was really cool because that's really insightful into how everything came about so i i think this basically i think this is going to help a lot selling the story because it just to, to put, put it on a different level. And I, I don't want to leave without, I mean, I'm jumping jump ahead, I'm thinking ahead of time, but no, no I we expect more from you like this, because I, I, you know, after this interview, my, my thinking is you nailed that, you absolutely nailed, you know, you know in an artistic, in an artistic expression, in when, well, that's what a movie is, an artistic expression, you nailed the, the, this, basically this realistic, uh, situation that we're living, you know, that it is what we expect maybe in the future more like this from you? Absolutely. Um, you know, I mean, that's, that's always the goal. I mean, you got to find what was great about this is it came, you know, I didn't, and that's, what's great about any sort of art. And as an artist, when you're, when you're starting to create something, we didn't necessarily know as much as we know now about this problem, because it just came, it just came about through the filmmaking process. So I truly hope that my next projects lead me to such, you know, um, uh, you know, understanding of, you know, potential human conditions that are out there, things that people are going through, um, because that's what's important at the end of the day. Obviously, you want, we want to see a movie to have fun and, and we want to watch a film to be moved, but, you know, it's the pieces yeah. that, that can, you know, that, that change, that can change a, a human being or, or an entire group of people can change their mindsets. You know, if the, if the film's done right, I mean, there's so many films that have changed me 
um, you know, even in, even in little ways about just being a human being in this world. Um, so I do hope, yeah, that, you know, it continued to come across subject matter that, that is really personal, that I find personal, or that I grow, that it grows to become personal and, and shine a light on it. And, and absolutely, that's the goal, right? I, I want to congratulate, congratulate the two of you on a really awesome film with a really powerful story. And that's, you know, that's what it is. That's what it is. So, uh, you know, really uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for the interview. It's really, really, really good, really interview, really insightful interview. And I wish the two of you best of luck. I mean, we, we, may, you, may, may you find more Michaela's that inspire you to do write more stories. That's what I want for you. So, so, so that's what, that's what that's, let's end it like that. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. thank you so much. We really appreciate everything. It was a real Great. pleasure um, chatting with you. And thank you so much for taking the time to get to know us a little bit and get to know the story. Um, this is a, a privilege and an honor just to be here. Thank you, Nicholas, again, for taking the gamble on me. <laughs> and yeah, we're all for functional art, art that serves a purpose. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you.